Hello guys and welcome for another New World video. Today I will share with you a build which I personally enjoy a lot and I always use when I'm trying to be useful as much as possible in PvE and of course the Mutation 3 runs. Not only that this build provides a lot of utility for the party but also if played correctly it will definitely be in top 3 of damage. If you are still not sure which weapon combination I'm talking about, let me help you. This is the Spear and Great Axe combination. I'm pretty sure that those two weapons are a must have as much as you need a healer and a tank for any mutation run. The amount of weaken and rent that they can provide is something that nobody wants to miss and if you are not having those two, you are definitely missing out a lot. With this build, the spear is the main hand weapon as it provides insane amounts of rent and weaken as already mentioned, but on top of that it also has one of the best damages to single targets and of course even to multiple targets. I'm pretty sure that in the right hands and with the correct build, the spear will get around the top 3 of the DPS, of course for PvE, right after the blood rapier and maybe the greatsword. But regardless of that, let's take a closer look at the build and see why it is so viable and necessary in each of your mutation runs. After all, damage is not everything and many other factors have to be taken in consideration. To start it all off, let's take a look at the main character and of course this will be the spear. As there are a few different variations, I will share with you all of them and will also let you know which spear I prefer to use. The first one and of course the one that I currently use is a spear with bleeding sweep, vicious and attunement. With this one you will achieve really high damage and your main focus should always be to apply the bleeding sweep when you have high in power. For example when the oblivion buff is under you or right after using skewer which already applied critical hit as this will provide you with 20% in power. If you manage to follow up correctly and do the bleeding sweep the dots from it might reach 1500 damage per second or even more. The second and maybe most common spear is the one with skewer, vicious and attunement. This spear is well known to everyone as it provides even bigger percentage of weaken to the targets due to the fact that the skewer perk is now on the weapon. However, with this one your damage will drop quite a lot and of course this is due to the exchange of more weaken. The third one that I want to share with you is of course the attunement, vicious and keenly jagged. As you can see this one is fully focused onto the damage and of course you use 3 offensive perks for it instead of using the previous skills. With it you can reach even higher numbers on the DPS board but you have to be sure if it's really worth it. In my honest opinion I think that starting with the skewer one is the best for new players or people who are still not that familiar with speedrunning and maximum score hunting. If you however want to reach the top 5 in both leaderboards I believe that the other two are the necessary choice. Keep in mind as well that all other perks from the spear have to be also slotted on your gear. This means that even if you go for bleeding sweep on your spear, you must have the skewer on your armor. For skill tree I'm using the one that you see on the screen and I believe that this is the most optimal one. It will provide you a lot of extra damage and cooldown as well as already mentioned many debuffs on the targets. Looking at our secondary weapon which in that case is the great axe, there is not much of a complication. The must have perk for it is of course the enfeebling maelstrom combined with the vicious and any chain element. This of course would be the ideal piece but in general what matters the most is the maelstrom perk as it will provide the much needed 27% weaken for 8 seconds to all targets that got hit by it. The tree for the great axe which I use is on the screen but as mentioned already the most important part of it are the different abilities and of course the maelstrom perk. Everything else doesn't provide that much of an impact so make sure that you have those slotted correctly. For gems on both weapons we are aiming for the pure diamonds without any rune glass effects as they will provide us with 15% increased damage as long as we are full on HP. 
And since we are melee users and we assume that our positioning is amazing, we should be standing on the sacred ground so that our HP is indeed at maximum on all times. Now, when we know what we should aim towards the weapon's perks, let's take a quick look over the armor pieces and the respective perks for them. First and most important is to mention the artifact of choice and for me this will be the attuned leather pants. I always go with them on this build because they give me a lot of bonuses and points from all different attributes. As mentioned already in the start, also all three perks of the spear build should be used on any of our armor pieces. If we assume that we have the bleeding sweep spear, this would mean that perforate and skewer should be also on our armor. The same goes if we have the skewer on our spear, then the bleeding sweep and the perforate should be on our armor. For the great axe, the only necessary perk is the maelstrom and it should be used on the weapon. And if you already have that, there is not much else that you can add. If you like however the gravity well one, you can go for it as it will provide you with a little bit of HP recovery. Speaking about defensive perks, as always our goal should be enchanted ward as this is the top priority in mitigation of damage. On the second place of course is the health and for third slot you can simply fill up the mentioned weapon perks or refreshing. In a perfect world my best in slot build would be looking like this but as I mentioned it is not necessary to have all that for good results. Going over the jewelries for the build it's worth mentioning that you can also choose between two types of amulets. The first one is the classical PvE amulet with health refreshing and the type of elemental protection for the necessary mutation. However, for this spear build you can also use Empower on the place of refreshing so you can extend even further your Empower level for even longer time during fights. The ring which you need for the build is also a classical one and you need to have hearty, trust damage and leeching on it. A great named ring which can also be used in that case is the Soul Pollen. And last but not least, of course, the last piece of the puzzle is the earring and again here you have two different options. The first one is to use the Endless Thirst with last perk Refreshing or Refreshing Toast or if you are missing this artifact you can go with a normal earring with the perks Refreshing, Refreshing Toast and Empowering Toast. Typical heart room for this build are the vines as they will root and keep the targets even longer after you use the gravity well on them. On top of that this rune will provide even more weaken and rent which you already have in your kit. However if you feel like other runes can be more beneficial for you you can always change to detonate, firestorm or whatever makes you happy. The only thing that we still have to go over are the attribute points. Since we have the attuned leather pants artifact, we will have a bit more points to spend than the usual. I'm currently using 25 constitution, 25 focus, 25 intelligence, 350 dexterity and everything else is spent in strength. This way I guarantee myself good cooldown reduction, a bit more sustained than usual and of course a lot of damage. And with that guys, I think I covered the main and basic things needed for a spear great axe build for PvE and mutations. If you think I've missed something, please let me know in the comments below or in my discord community channel for which I will leave a link in the description. I would also love to hear your feedback on the build if you decide to give it a try and would be even more interested to hear suggestions from those of you who are already playing it. If you want to see more stuff related to New World both for PvE and PvP make sure to follow my live stream on Kick, where I stream regularly from Wednesday to Sunday. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.